Hey everybody, in this episode of I Talk Movies, we're getting up close and personal with actress Annika Lilsblad. Let's do it. Welcome to Popcorn Talk, featuring movie discussion, news, and interviews. Popcorn Talk, we talk movies. And now, here's Popcorn Talk's I Talk Movie. That's right. It is hip to be square, especially when your film is nominated for an Academy Award there. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to iTalk Movies here. Huey Lewis is playing us in, but we're here to talk about some of the, uh, as always with iTalk Movies, the people in front of and behind the camera that bring you all the great entertainment that you get to see in the theaters, maybe at home, or on your mobile streaming device. I'm your host, Frank Moran. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at HappyGoJackie. Now, my guest today is uh, an actress from Sweden. Uh, she's, uh, you can consider her, she got to start as sort of like the Martha Stewart of talk shows for uh, for expanding and, and pursuing a lifelong dream of acting. She is now in an Oscar-nominated film, as I mentioned, called The Square, <laughs> directed by uh, Ruben Oslin and starring Dominic West and Elizabeth Moss. Uh, the Academy Awards, folks, is going to be happening next Sunday night. My guest is going to be uh, sitting on the edge of her seat. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give her a big round of applause. Annika Lierschblatt. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh, so, my God, what a presentation. Yes. When you said that, I just realized... It, it's true. That yes, it's true. That, that the first time until I, you're like, nah, I'm just, I guess I'm out here for <laughs> just to hang out for a few weeks. No, but I, I actually flew in only to to go to the Oscars. No, honestly, I still can't believe it's true. I, I mean, even if you you said it in very lovely words, thank you very much. It was a great presentation. I I mean, I assume as you know, as as an actor, and you're just you do it because you love the art. But then when your film gets acknowledged like this, mm-hmm. what is that feeling for one? You're just excited to do the project, but then all of a sudden to see the critical acclaim it gets, and then it gets nominated. What does that feel like? That is, it's it's quite strange because when, when you're on set and doing the project, shooting and and being together with the team and and uh, creating something from from a script. I mean, it's on the paper and it has to be realized. And and uh, you're doing a character, in my case, Sonia, a beautiful woman, but uh, with her own problems. It's so strange to to see the work you've done, go into a totally different phase, uh, being um, acknowledged, uh, and and then been seen by people people are reacting when I'm in the streets people oh, aren't you the one yeah yes I am the one uh, and they, they, <laughs> they love to talk about the film and and just that is is really uh, something special and now here and and a nomination for an Oscar that's uh, no it, honestly I can't believe it I still can't believe it but I probably will in a couple of years after the Oscars <laughs> that, <laughs> I, yeah. that I'm here. That, yeah. that the film I, I was in L.A. a couple yeah, years ago. That yeah. was pretty cool. Yeah. Now, yeah. Uh, we'll get to more about the, uh, the mm. film and the Oscars in a little bit. But, mm. uh, I mean, to, to start off, uh, just with a little bit about you. I mean, acting is literally in your blood. It is. Yes. I mean, you come from a long, uh, you've got a long history in terms of your family, in terms of acting. I do. I have ancestors. Uh, there are uh, thespians in, in uh, Sweden uh, that actually were in uh, theater. Uh, very good one, popular ones. I've seen the books, I've read the books, and, and uh, obviously they were good. But then there was actually a big gap. My mother and father are not at all into creative uh, jobs like this. Um, but I, as a child, I was always playing some role. I loved it. I, I either I was a priest and, and just talking to the people that were not there, but but my dolls were there and listening carefully to what I said. Um, I, I was fr- fr- really from the very beginning. I I, I had to talk to people uh, because I love people and I love to be the messenger and I love to to live in a world of fantasy. I think it, the fantasy makes the world a little bit more beautiful <laughs> so so yeah I, um, I, I I did that from very young and I was um, dreaming of, of working with it but I didn't realize that you actually could do that and my father and mother didn't encourage me to do it so when I turned mm-hmm I um, <laughs> you never yeah, of course no, you never yes. talk about uh, the age of absolutely woman. no uh, my husband actually told me to now, honestly, you have to do it. I mean, fulfill your dream or at least try, uh, which I did. So I went to school when I was mm-hmm, 50. Uh, <laughs> and I was, of course, the oldest one in the class, but I was uh, probably the happiest one. And uh, I had so much fun and did what I really wanted to do. 
and now I'm here. And uh, this, uh, as soon as I started school, I got jobs. So, yes, it is difficult for women beyond a certain age, perhaps, to get roles. But I, I, I really want to fight against that. I, I, I don't listen to that. I just want to be the one who shows that it is possible to get roles. And, of course, we are part of the society, so why shouldn't we Absolutely. be in movies, too? So, and here I am. Ruben believes in, in uh, older women, honestly, <laughs> obviously. Mm -hmm. So how old were you when you did kind of learn about your family's kind of history in terms of acting? That was perhaps 20 years ago or something that I, I learned. And, and on my father's side, my grandmother, she was uh, really, she was an actress in her way of living. She always loved to, to have these big parties and uh, being on stage and talking and singing and dancing. So there, there is something in the blood, uh, I guess. So <laughs> <laughs> be careful. I mean, if you put on good m music here, I start to dance oh, too. Oh, all right, so, Anthony. Yeah. Tira. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that was a good song That's to right. play. Oh, there you go. I loved it. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. thank you. Uh, really? Yeah. So when you when you already have these kind of tendencies towards acting, mm -hmm. and you know that uh, that you find out that hey, this is kind of a history in my family of mm -hmm. this. Uh, what was it like for not to be kind of that get that support from your parents? Were they were they kind of like, well, eh, maybe you shouldn't? No, they weren't. No, nah, you shouldn't. They were. Uh, hmm, they they loved it when I played around and I had my own theater at home and in the school I was as much on stage as possible. Um, they loved it, but they never thought in 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 terms of this could actually be my professional future. So, and, and someone asked me the other day if, if are you, perhaps, are there any regrets that you didn't do this when you were younger? And, um, of course, you could say there could be, but uh, no, I don't think that I would have been as passionate, passionate about it uh, if I started as a 20 years old uh, actor. Um, I do it now, and I do it fully, with my heart, body, soul, everything, every tiny cell is involved in it. So now I think I do it with another kind of fire than I would have. Yeah, because I would imagine having doing the other things that you've done, whether it be a mm -hmm. talk show or go to yeah. university with marketing, things like that, you've already pursued other avenues, mm -hmm. and you've kind of f get, got that, that sense of fulfillment from those, and feel like, well, no, mm -hmm. there's this one avenue in my life that I hadn't mm -hmm. gotten that fulfillment yeah. yet, so I can pursue this wholeheartedly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're right. Uh, or perhaps uh, the other uh, jobs I had, I mean, television is not that far from, from f shooting film or being in the theater, but, um, because you're the one in control. You have to make it a good time, entertain, and, and be a good host, and so on. So, so I, it was perhaps quite cl close to where I was supposed to be on the next level. Um, I once upon a time, I think it's now 25 years ago, I actually went to this uh, kind of, how do you say, fortune... Uh, fortune teller? Uh, fortune teller. Well, you shouldn't perhaps believe in that kind of stuff, but I... I asked her, what am I doing uh, in the future? And she said, and that this was 25 years ago, uh, she said, mm, I can see you in front of a camera. And then I thought, okay, that sounds very, okay, maybe just a mobile or <laughs> what I... That's like a very general, <laughs> kind of like, it could be anything, I could, any yeah, camera. <laughs> but she was right, obviously. And I, I, I mean, yeah, here I am. And I'm... Um, what my my goal is definitely uh, not to be a star uh, or fame or money. There isn't that much money in it, but and and um, and not fame. But uh, it's really about the work. And I've said it before, and I say it again. I'm not even perhaps. I don't have to play the leading role in every uh, movie. I, I'm satisfied with a supporting one or just being in the project because I love the creative atmosphere there is among so many people, talented people um, doing whatever they do and everyone is doing its tiny bit just to create a big uh, end result and, and if I can be part of it I'm, I'm happy. So as you were growing <laughs> up and yeah. it's getting uh, time to kind of pursue what you wanted to do in the university, mm -hmm. was it your kind of choice, like maybe I'll, I'll, I'll study marketing, journalism, things like that, or mm. was it like, I want to do acting, but I'm not mm. sure if this is something I could do mm. now? 
I did it as a hobby all the time. Uh, but I was grown up in a city where it, at, in my generation, it was it was supposed to have a proper job, and um, that was a, one way of, of getting there. So I never uh, actually thought so much about uh, it. Was so far away that that you actually could be an actress. I mean, yeah, or I was stupid. <laughs> well, at, at the time when you were growing up, what was the film industry like in Sweden? Is it very was Tiny. it very small? No, yeah, small. I mean, we had Bergman, Ingmar Bergman, mm-hmm. which if he would be alive, he would be hundred years this year. So there is a big jubilee. Uh, there is a big uh, yeah celebration of him now, um, and uh, yeah, great filmers, uh, Greta Garbo. We have a history. We do have a de- fantastic history of, of film and movies and theater. But uh, for me, it it uh, it was too long. Something that was too fantastic to actually achieve for me, for for little me. Why should I be even, yeah, in that kind of world? So I I chose this secure way of doing career, and I was so bored. <laughs> to, uh, really, uh, I I didn't even like school in that theoretical way that was not part of me I, I, I'm just too movable I'm too mobile <laughs> I need to express myself in a totally different way so this was too too framed uh, the school and then I got the job you know business jobs typewriting uh, and and okay it was a good job and I'm happy for that I could survive but um, I was not really really happy in my heart were you doing also? Were you doing any acting while you were at university, or is it solely focused on your studies? Uh, uh, only focus on my studies actually, um, and and um, I was in some hobby groups and did some, but no 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 acting classes uh, whatsoever. In, in terms of marketing, does it at least give you a chance to kind of because you're coming up with different campaigns, being mm-hmm. creative? Does it at least scratch a little bit of that kind of creative itch, or no? It does, uh, yes, it does, uh, and it's such a good combination of being. I mean, taking this decision very late in life, uh, it it it, it um, you need some sort of of um, stupidity to to do this step uh, to to make this uh, come alive, uh, and the combination of having this dream and this passion f- for the acting. Um, in in combination with uh, the marketing knowledge of, of marketing and, and thinking PR is not bad because I when I see the younger uh, and I, I actually have a lot of meetings back home with younger students uh, acting uh, students and try to inspire them how to actually survive in this awful business I mean the, the business is really <laughs> insane so you really you you need to be uh, smart in a business kind of way too. You cannot only rely on your um, creativity and being, um, uh, well, an actor and and moody or uh, dark or like back in Sweden, there are many people who are very difficult to talk with and, uh, you know, (laughs) they they think that you're really something very strange when you come and, and talk about PR or PR, you need to market yourself you need to sell yourself and show yourself otherwise nobody knows that you're there well, I guess so, that's, I mean, that's the the business side of mm-hmm. what they describe as show business mm-hmm. where it, it just can't be just the performance you also need to be able to kind of sell yourself yeah and as that well. I learned in in the United States I, I have a coach uh, who actually taught me that uh, I didn't realize because before before I came to the United, uh, to, to the US you you learn me that it's I mean it is show business, <laughs> so you need to know something about business too. So uh, how do you make the leap from working in marketing, doing PR, mm-hmm. to then being the host of your own show? Oh, um, uh, yeah. As I said, I wasn't happy. I was uh, bored. It sounds very as if I yeah. Uh, sounds like a I'm so lu- luxury woman, but but. Um, I uh, realized that there was something more, and uh, and there was an ad uh, one day in the newspaper. You know, the paper, paper, oh, yes. paper. Those yeah. old, those old timey papers. <laughs> exactly. <Yes. laughs> um, saying we are looking for new presenters at uh, the public service channel, which is Sveriges Television, 
it's like BBC or CNN mm -hmm. in Sweden, and um, they were looking for new presenters. And I said, okay, I'll, I'll give it a try. So I came to an audition, and then uh, oh, I got a call back, and then I got another audition, and then got the job. So I actually combined the job as a marketing PR uh, woman in, in the World Trade Center at that time in Stockholm, and, and then um, uh, at this uh, public service channel. So I started off as a uh, presenter between the programs, I said, and now it's time for news. Or, yeah, <laughs> you know. And then, uh, then I got my own show. Uh, and and worked a couple of years with interviewing uh, guests, uh, cooking, uh, gardening, fashion, makeup, design, whatever, everything, every topic from life. And, and that was going for that initial audition. Mm -hmm. Are you feeling nervous about it, or you feel like this is an opportunity for me to perform? So I'm not nervous at all heading in. Now you're talking acting auditions, or yes. yeah, oh, um, yes, I am nervous, but there is a way technique an acting technique of actually getting rid of this uh, or at least not perhaps not get rid of it the energy but turn it uh, over to something good so the nervousness you can actually use it um, if you do some some technique um, do you want me to show oh, oh uh, I, I would love this is love really, this, yes and the fact is I learned this from a wonderful guy he's an American too you see uh, Jeffrey Glickman, he lives in Stockholm, Sweden, and he's a great, great acting teacher. And he, uh, uh, this is gonna look very ugly, okay? <laughs> Are you prepared? And All this right. is gonna be loud. So, Anthony, the producer, <laughs> please turn everything down because I'm, yeah, exactly. <laughs> he did, I can hear. All right, you do like this, relax, and then. <sighs> And I, I mean, I didn't do it that loud. I can do it louder. Yeah. And if you do this a couple of times, your body relaxes. You get rid of your tension. You get rid of every bad energy in your body, and you're just vulnerable. And when you're vulnerable, you're good. You get down to the raw you. So you are doing that <laughs> that movement uh, while yeah. you're in the waiting room, right, waiting to go into audition. I no. I usually do it in my car. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. just check it out. <laughs> At the red light. All right. <laughs> so somebody's just driving yeah. by next to yeah, like, yeah. What? What's, <laughs> exactly. what's happening right next to me? Yeah, probably, yeah. <laughs> but I haven't been caught by the police yet, no. <laughs> but yeah, it's a good, really good way of, uh, of getting rid of tension, I'm whatever you, you're supposed to do, even if it's for right. an interview. So I'm going to uh, remember I that. I will. I can only imagine you just uh, parked outside here mm -hmm. and then just doing that before I you did. came in. Yep. Because I know it was a very nerve-wracking experience. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's good to be a little bit tense before an uh, audition. Of course it is. But because um, I, I guess for me that kind of that it kind of feels that you that you want it that you're that you're passionate about it. Mm -hmm. If you're not feeling mm -hmm. that, you're like, then why am I here? Yeah, but yeah, you're right. Of course, that's why you do it, uh, and it's a very s special situation. I mean, you saw it in La La Land. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, when she was auditioning, you you can actually meet a lot of strange people in that situation, and you're so you're like a big open wound uh, and vulnerable, and you really want the job but the thing is when if that is um if you, if they can see or this is written in your forehead i want the job you're not good you're too desperate so the yeah. trick is for you out there actor please remind that when you go into the audition don't think i want this job because then you're not going doing it as good as you could uh, so just make yourself vulnerable and do it for an, an audience. Just imagine there is an audience, a normal audience. And <laughs> it's hard, I know, but um, that's actually the, the, the thing that uh, differs uh, success from not succeeding in that situation, at least. True. I, I mean, it, it is, I think, I, I guess, and that's maybe the, you know, just the experience that comes with doing this or uh, that you just know that there's so many other aspects that yeah. come into getting cast for a, a, mm. a role that you could be fantastic in the room and still not get it and you need to be able to let yourself 
not worry about that and just do what you can in the room. Exactly. And when you go out and if you don't get the job, then still you, the best thing is that you get the feeling I did my absolutely best. I couldn't have done it differently. And uh, if they choose another one, uh, yeah, okay, she, she might be better for, for the role. Uh, just have to accept the fact and fa- fact, sorry. And uh, yeah, and then you go out and hit someone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. Mm. Pop, there mm. you go. I feel exactly. better. Yeah, Shake yeah. it off. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Much better. <laughs> <laughs> or you get into the car again. Yeah. <laughs> so while you're back doing your talk show, is mm. it a, is it a daily talk show or is it a weekly talk show? That was a. Um, I'm not uh, having the talk yes, show right now. Yeah, yes. when I had it was a, not a daily one. It was a daily one, and uh, yeah. Did you enjoy? Because I it says it becomes a, a kind of a grind to be mm-hmm. able to get that because. Mm-hmm. There's so much content you have to create every single mm, day. Mm. Did you enjoy the experience of, of kind of having to generate so much material in such a rapid Ooh, amount of time? I did. I was actually married at that time, we, but uh, luckily my husband lived in, in, in another city. So uh, because if uh, we, we didn't see each other at all, I worked a lot, and it was yeah, it was it was uh, hard work, but but still, I'm that kind of very curious person. So um, I love to meet people and I love to, to ask them hundreds of questions. And I think that if you, you're, if you ask me what, what are your interests or hobbies, except for the acting, of course, I could count, I mean, boom, I could be, be here for days and just uh, tell you <laughs> I'm interested in this and this and this. And this and I love to do this and this and this. So I have so many interests. So that was the perfect host um, job for me. I feel like it also helps that you don't become too precious about it because you can't get hung up about what you've just done because we've got to do a new show tomorrow. Exactly. There's yeah, no you sense just have to, yeah, let it go. And, and uh, yeah, that's the hard thing. That's the hard thing. Is letting it go? Yeah. Yeah, not true. I'm very critical. I'm, 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 I'm always, um, yeah, um, scrutinizing my, my own job. So, so yeah. That's the hard part, but uh, the, the the pace is so high, so so you don't have much time to reflect. Oh, what did I do? What did I say? Why did I? Oh, yeah. So, um, but when I do, I'm very, mm, I'm very. How do you say hard on myself? That, yes. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. I I completely understand with that. I'm yeah. much like that myself. Yeah. Yes, I'm constantly judging this whole interview right now. You do. What am I doing? Oh, oh yeah. Why did I? I, I can't that? believe I said that. Exactly. <laughs> You are fantastic. Oh, my gosh. Please. Thank you so much. Wow. I appreciate it. That's very yes. kind of you to say. You are amazing. Well, honestly. All right. Yeah. I'm going to have you be my personal PR person. Every day. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Fantastic. <laughs> yeah. So for you, uh, being naturally curious, when you're doing this talk show, interviewing a wide variety mm-hmm. of different people that come onto your program, is that something that you were able to just like, yep, I'm, I, I'm, it's great to be able to draw this kind of information out of people? Or did you kind of have to work on your craft in terms of being able to have a great interview with somebody to be able to draw them out? I have to be, yeah, yeah. That's what the, it makes the job so fantastic because I have to. You, you can't just uh, have a sheet of, of, uh, of with questions and ask them without even looking at the, the person. I mean, if I see that you react of some kind, I have to catch up that. Mm-hmm. I have to. Uh, I mean, w- work on that part of what you're saying or what you might be thinking. So, so, and that's the, what I love. In the beginning, when I did it, I was. Uh, so perhaps tense so I just okay the next question okay yeah okay and the next question is uh, I was too much into my script Mm -hmm. but then okay and after a couple of weeks there was some daily show a couple of weeks I had a script I knew what this person was here to talk about but then I just let it go and doing it in the go with the flow with the guests yes yeah. I feel like there's so much they can just be had just by just kind of just engaging with somebody and just talking to them and just seeing mm. those little those little nuggets that they can kind of present to you that just mm. makes it's, it so much more of an interesting conversation it, exactly and really yes it does and that is the same with acting if uh, because acting is about listening it is so so it was very good training uh, uh, camp for me <laughs> the years in, in television were really good in that sense because I, I became a quite good listener if I might say it <laughs> myself very so shy you know, the Swedes never talk good about themselves so. but, oh, but you're I, I, great. I'm, I'm a good listener yes uh, uh, now you mentioned a uh, marriage and a husband for a second uh, mm. former Olympian 
Yes, he so is. So now, uh, of course, the Winter Olympics just wrapping up there. Well, you've been in here, L.A., for a few weeks. Mm -hmm. Were you kind of, uh, are you a are you kind of family that's kind of glued to the Olympics and watch it? Or, eh, it's okay. We had our time and we let it go. We, we, just uh, now I let everything else go. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> But he still is in. Uh, he's actually sailing um, back in Sweden, and he has made a lot of fantastic uh, achievements in, in world championships and, and Olymp the Olympics, of course, in South Korea. Uh, and uh, and he was in LA '87, I think, before the Olympics, just to qualify. So, yeah, and he he has been here a lot of times actually in in LA to sail and compete. Mm -hmm. I, mm -hmm. I have to give it up because I, I would imagine just the, certainly there's more world championships, but I think mm -hmm. as growing up, you only think of it, it's once every four years mm -hmm. and they work so hard yeah. for this moment. Mm -hmm. And then it's four years before they get the opportunity to go mm -hmm. do this again. Mm -hmm. uh, was your husband, was he fine with that? Or was he just like, oh, I got to wait four <laughs> more years? Exactly. <laughs> He is like that. Yeah, <laughs> he's that kind of type. Yeah, he's a very competitive type. Yeah. So, do you, uh, as we wrap up your uh, your TV career, do you mm -hmm. do you miss having that kind of daily experience, or you're like that? I'm fine with it, and I like being able to kind of sink into like a, a film project and take my time. Mm -hmm. A very good question, because I think that I, I since I, I love the work and and I now know I'm so. Uh, Secure. I feel so secure in this. Uh, what I'm doing, I'm doing it full time acting, and but I I would love to meet people in the TV uh, environment again. Yes, please. Um, <laughs> I would really enjoy it uh, because it's it's as I said, it's the same way. It's about listening, talking, reacting, acting. It's uh, all in the same bag. And I'd love to do that because I'm still curious about life and people. So yeah. Do you find yourself kind of just defaulting into being a host when you're at on a film set? You're sitting yeah. there in a film, and it's just easy if you're sitting around another fellow, whether it be crew members or fellow cast members, mm -hmm. just kind of lapping into that little host role and start just kind of engaging <laughs> in, in conversations and drawing them out. I do. <laughs> <laughs> I do. Actually, someone told me, please, now, save your energy, okay? Save your energy. You don't have to be, I mean, you're here for an, for an acting part, okay? You don't have to. Because I, I'm always like, oh, do you want some coffee? Okay, are you fine? I think she looks a bit pale. Shouldn't she rest now? Shall we take a break? I mean, uh, yeah, I'm that kind of person. So I, that's the mother in me, I guess. Yeah. True, but I guess if you're uh, you have your own show, you're looking out for all facets of, mm. of everything, whether what, you know to <laughs> what people are having in their in their cup to drink, to yeah. uh, what everybody's looking like, to the lights, to the crew, is somebody behind the camera kind of feeling a little woozy. Mm. I mean, that's I, <laughs> yeah. it's. I think I feel like that would be a hard thing to turn off. Mm. To just like I'm not going to care about anything no. that's happening around me no. right now. No, yeah, you're right, and I think that you are the same. But, <laughs> but really, yes, I do care, and and that's the um, not to. To, to, I'm not Florence Nightingale, but but I am, and again I guess that, that that's the part of me that uh, goes so good hand in hand with the acting part, the sensitive part. I sense, I can, I have a sensor that uh, feels a lot. I am vulnerable. I could cry and uh, laugh as, as easy. Uh, the way to laughing and, and crying is actually uh, short. Uh, so, so I could, yeah, I, I feel a lot. I, my, my sensors are always on, uh, which is good in a way. But it's sometimes also quite hard because I can, uh, I realize, realize a lot and uh, would be, yeah, I mean, the audience. I yes. would li love to take care of everyone, but. Uh, <laughs> yeah, oh. If Charles here would like to take, you want to take care of Charles <laughs> yeah. right now? What, what is Charles doing? Charles, what do you need? He, he, he needs some ice cream right now. Ah, yeah. All right. Okay. <laughs> or Fantastic. some popcorn. Popcorn. Yeah. <laughs> so when you finally, you're, you're talking with your husband, and they say, you know, you really should pursue this. Uh, if this is yep. one you're really passionate about, mm -hmm. go back and pursue this. And you go back and you start studying this. Mm -hmm. What's it like going back in? Is it kind of like a hello old friend kind of feeling? Or was it a little bit of nervousness kind of pursuing this? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because, I mean, uh, 50 years old and, and uh, oldest in the class, I could be their mother and their teacher and, and uh, principal and <laughs> uh, so yes it was I was nervous and I was actually feeling as a crazy the crazy lady a long time when I did it and it took a long time before I could say I am an actress 
but when I finally did, uh, it felt totally natural. But but it uh, yeah, because I was afraid of what other people would think. I felt I was, but but and again, it's a mentality question. I think that you in in this country, you are much more outgoing and and you have a very positive way of seeing others you, you encourage our other people to succeed and you're happy and, and you're friendly in a, in a fantastic way back in sweden everyone is friendly it's a wonderful country really you should come but um <laughs> there there is a there is some criticism too and, and oh my god there's there is a law an unofficial unof law that says uh, jantelagen <clears throat> and it says you shouldn't think that you are someone hey hey okay take it easy oh. um, that uh, I hope disappears with the coming younger generations but uh, still yeah it, it um, affected me too who am I to think that I can so, um, that's it, kind it of uh, yeah, because mm -hmm. it, it imagines me, it makes me think of uh, a, a country that is just full of people that are like, oh well, we don't really want to pursue what we're really passionate about because we just yeah. let's just do what's kind of safe or expected of us. Mm -hmm. And that I I feel so sorry of. Uh, I mean, I hope I can be a good example for many people, women and men, to actually listen to your heart. What does your heart tell you? Is there a dream that you haven't fulfilled yet? Um, is the dream following you all through life? It might be some signal. It could actually be some something some telling you that this is what you should do. I mean, there is some truth in your dream. And, and not to listen, I mean, to avoid listening to this, uh, to, to, to this voice is uh, yeah it, it's a shame because I mean if you think that people what would think people think about me if I, I tell them that I'm gonna start acting or or, or opening a flower shop or or uh, start playing basketball or whatever it is a dream um, being ashamed to because you, you you're afraid of what all other people say um, that's um, holding you back from living your life True. I that's feel like that's the scariest thing though is to have that courage to be able to take that first step mm -hmm. into pursuing something that you really mm -hmm. are passionate about mm -hmm. but are so afraid to like oh because the, everybody I think has that feeling like oh yeah. who am I yeah everybody else is doing this mm -hmm. already what can I offer this mm -hmm. that a million other people aren't yeah. already giving this. Mm -hmm. And it takes courage, yes. And it sometimes perhaps also takes uh, some decisions that you have to make, decisions that you they're quite hard to take. But perhaps you're not having the right kind of friends uh, that if they don't encourage you to do what you want to do and when they see that you're happy that they actually encourage you to, to be even more happy, uh, change friends. I mean, it, it sounds easy, I know, it's hard to do, but, but also perhaps a partner, if you have a partner who doesn't let you bloom, uh, I mean, mm -hmm. grow, um, it might be the wrong partner. <laughs> that's, yeah. No, that's very true, yeah. very true. Mm -hmm. uh, and especially with, uh, with someone who has uh, two daughters like uh, that you have. I mm -hmm. mean, you also want to be sort of a, a role model for them. Yep. You don't want to be the parent that's like, well, I never really pursued what I was no. passionate about, so follow my example. Mm -hmm. And they definitely thought I was crazy. They, mm, oh, it's, but now. Not so yeah, crazy now. You're no. here in Los Angeles for the Academy <laughs> exactly. Awards. Not so crazy no, now. No. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm their star. So that's another reason for doing it, actually. If you don't do it for yourself, do it for your children or, or other people. Yeah, inspire. That's good. Well, it, it, for you, it's got to be fantastic because, as you mentioned, you are studying, but then you're mm -hmm. also booking roles yep. while you're studying as well. Yeah. It has to be an incredible amount of validation for, like, mm. I am doing the right thing now. Yes. So and what was your first thing that you booked? The first thing I booked was a commercial. Uh, a very funny one with uh, sumo uh, wrestlers, uh, big, you know, the big guys. There were three of them. Uh, the whole, they had um, came from Japan for, for this commercial. And uh, among these three big bodies, I was and uh, <laughs> <laughs> selling some products. So, so yeah, I did some commercials, actually several. 
once. And then there was immediately there was a TV series and a film, a movie, many TV series. Um, so the, yeah, it it started immediately, and that was uh, yeah amazing. As you say, as a validation of it was right. It was the right choice to do. So you're doing the various TV series, do you? Uh, but then also you start booking films. Mm -hmm. Certainly, a, yep. a very different filming schedules. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, certainly, depending on the size of the production for a film, uh, a lot longer production schedule, a lot more time for shooting. Mm -hmm. Television a little bit quicker schedule, yeah, uh, because you have mm -hmm. to turn around so many, so much content in a shorter amount of time. Yeah, uh, which which do you prefer? Um, I still uh, um, in that age, I, I would prefer a, a series of movies. For, for a couple of more years and mm -hmm. then when I settle down in my <laughs> 80s or something I would yes. love to be in a series and just continue to be the same character until my t I take my last breath <laughs> in terms of uh, Swedish programming yeah. uh, what are, I, I'm not very familiar in terms of television programming for Sweden I, is it very much of what you see here in the States a nice mixture of reality yeah. drama comedy it is it is everything you do we do Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, what is your preference, comedy or drama? Oh, uh, comedy. Uh, to be uh, to 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 be in uh, 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 also to watch uh, comedy definitely. Uh, but uh, I mean drama. I, that, that depends on where I am in my mood uh, slope. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and I guess I'm also wondering because uh, you're very much a cinephile. So, but growing up, what were things that you watched? Uh, in terms of films that kind of gave you inspiration for wanting to keep pursuing this dream? Um, I saw a lot of uh, black and white, yes, they were actually black and white once upon a time, <laughs> uh, films and movies, and, and especially from, from, from your wonderful country. Uh, I mean, the dancing ones, the Hollywood, really Hollywood, Hollywood ones with stepping and dancing. Well, and like Fred Astaire. Astaire. Yes. yes. I love them. I love them. I, I saw myself in that kind of dress and dancing around with uh, Fred and others. <laughs> uh, and, and yeah, well, all these wonderful, th it was so romantic. I love that. So that was actually the first, my first experience of, of film, movies, and, and, and that kind of acting dream. And, uh, but now I, um, well, I think I am, I, I am an all eater, as you say in Sweden. I'm eating everything that has to do with movie. Perhaps not. Um, yeah, thrillers. I am quite. I don't like to be scared that much. So. Okay, but something Va like vampires. Say... I don't like vampires. No. Hmm. Mm. Okay, Did but you... something like The Greatest Showman. Yes, for example. Oh, what a! F oh, I loved it. Yeah. <laughs> have you seen it? I have seen it. Oh, yes. It's absolutely fantastic. I I, I enjoy the music in that film more than I enjoyed it in La La Land. So did I. Thank you. Sorry, I didn't want to say that actually because I thought that you oh, were no, going no. to be sad. But oh, no, 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 no not you're at all. Right. The music is absolutely great, and that's uh, part of the, my my playlist at home. It, and as of mine as well. Is yep. it? Yeah, yeah, it is. <laughs> oh, I love that music. Yeah. So for you from the square, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Ruben Osland, mm -hmm. he 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 reaches out to you. He he sees you on TV yep. doing your show and says, "I would like to reach out to you." Was it? Basically, just I'd like to offer you this part, or was it? No, no, no. Let's no. have a meeting and audition for this. Oh yes, yes, yes. Everyone who has to do with the Ruben Ostlund has to go through a really uh, thoroughly uh, audition, a series of auditions. It's not not only one. Uh, even Elizabeth Moss, I guess. Uh, Klaus Bang, he had to write a speech for an hour. He had to. He gave him just the the the, the art piece of the square and told him, you have to write a script and come to me and, and uh, present it. So that was one of his uh, auditions. Um, uh, I had to do three, uh, two with his casting director and then the third one with, with him personally. And that was an improvisation. So, so for two hours we had this improv. Uh, that was really funny. We are from the same city in, in, Gothenburg, in Sweden. It's called Gothenburg at the West Coast. And I think that we shared the same kind of humor. <laughs> so we had a lot of fun. We were laughing and uh, it was really funny. But two hours, I was totally exhausted. I I'm slept sure. for days afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How do you keep your enthusiasm up for this? Or is it much like if you're auditioning just for any film? Third time that you're auditioning yeah. for this. Mm -hmm. Do you, 
do you have to just keep, you have to keep lowering those expectations mm -hmm. you don't you don't want to build it up so much no, in your head like right. I've got to get this yeah but I imagine that's easy to say but hard to do yeah it is uh, you know that, that what, what I was talking about before the thing I want this role I mean uh, the letters were even bigger the third time <laughs> yes. I want this role. <laughs> but so I had to do this exercise of course uh, but uh, yes um, I couldn't believe it. Actually, after the first one, I got a call two weeks later. I said, no, sorry, you didn't get the part. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. But then you they call again. hit somebody. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But then after another two weeks, they call again. Oh, sorry. It, it was a mistake. Sorry. <laughs> You're still on. Yes, of course. We, 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 we want you to next uh, audition in a couple of weeks. Please come. I did. It went well. All right. And then they called again f for the third one. And then I had to wait, wait for three weeks before the call came. You got the part. Oh. And that was a day, uh, a long night celebrating. I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Oh. <laughs> so me in a Ruben Östlund film. That is actually a dream of every uh, actor in Sweden. Uh, really? Yeah. And he doesn't, I, I don't think he does. Uh, he hasn't done, done it this before, but he doesn't reuse any actor. So once you've been in this uh, film, oh. you're you're done. Oh. But, but I'm so happy. So. Um, well, yeah. But you, you, what if you're the one that uh, that changes everything? Ruben's like, oh, I want Annika, you again. I, yeah. Annika, I can't. I can't do another film without you. <laughs> you break it. You break the curse. Then I okay. Let me think about <laughs> yeah. it. Yeah, give me some time. Hmm. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> So for you uh, playing Sonia, the, mm -hmm. the PR marketing director mm -hmm. for the, the museum, yeah, I mean, I, I very much a tailor-made role for you, being able to tap into yes. everything that you've been uh, kind of pursuing and working on and being uh, experiencing in your life. You're right, definitely. It was me. Sonia was me, um, and uh, he, uh, yeah, you're right. And this, I, I guess, and many people kind of compare this to, and it seems like like a curb your enthusiasm, like a Larry David type feel, where mm -hmm. it is. Uh, just <laughs> come, you, you just keep stepping further and further into it the further you go and trying mm. to perhaps do the right thing but then in the worst way possible mm. and things just keep steamrolling mm -hmm. uh, for this is there a lot of improvisation that Ruben does on this to for those kind of comedic moments or is it pretty much I've got the script and pretty much stick to it uh, it was the first choice there mm. uh, no it is a pr improvisation uh, it uh, he has a fantastic uh, unique way of, of working which Elizabeth Moss was really uh, surprised of the first day <laughs> she came because he he had he takes for every angle you you put the camera in a way in one angle and then he takes at least he starts off with 25 takes I mean 25 takes normally it's four or five or perhaps say eight but he starts with 25 takes and then he adds another five or ten takes which means the 25 first he doesn't keep them but uh, but you as an actor are totally out of control you 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 I mean the first five seven ten fifteen you try to create something which you I think oh this this is probably what he wants to see so even if it's subconscious, you, you, you do things that you think should stick to or be in this uh, character, but, but after 25, you're just, you're just Sonia. <laughs> yeah. you're, you're totally naked. You're the raw Sonia. And, and then you're, again, vulnerable as, as never before. So what happens the last five or 10 takes is that he, he he achieves what he wants to achieve, and that is the uncertainty, the uncomfortable situation of the actor, which you, as an audience, also experience mm -hmm. in the theater. You get quite uncomfortable when you see the film, don't you? Yes, yes, you do. You should do. <laughs> Different. That's exactly what he wants. That that's his goal with with working. So uh, Klaus Bang, who worked with him for many weeks. Um, he he was uh, yeah he was totally uh, finished afterwards actually My it bad. was hard work and Elizabeth Moss <laughs> the first day we were shooting this scene when I'm running up the stairs to class just to tell him that the the exhibition downstairs is destroyed 
um, uh, and and I, I yeah I did run up the stairs 25 plus 10 times and Elizabeth was standing <laughs> What are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> it's just the way we are supposed to work yeah. every day. Yeah, she was really shocked. Mm -hmm. How are you just uh, physically? Mm -hmm. uh, 25 plus plus five plus 10. <laughs> yeah. Running up those stairs yeah. that, that last time, you're yeah. like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to stop halfway down and just yell because I can't go any further. <laughs> like, Can I take my line from down here? <laughs> No, and the thing is, the stairs were really there were many steps, and he didn't let me uh, just start halfway. No, oh. no, no, I should go all the way down oh. to the elevator and start <laughs> from the very beginning. And you didn't, you couldn't see me from for, for, for the last three steps. That's when, I, but he wanted me to be exhausted. But I, uh, but I, uh, yeah, I exercise every day, so um, I had a quite good heart and good conditions. So. But I still have to imagine knowing you have to go up those stairs and knowing that Ruben's going to throw away those first 25. Yeah. You're like, man, I'm going to have just this first 25. It doesn't even matter. And I'm running up them anyway. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. That's what I said. This business is insane. This is, it's a crazy job. Why do you do it? I don't know. Now, did you know Ruben was like this before you got on? Is it very much like within the actor community? People are like, Ruben's like this. Have you ever gotten one of Ruben's films? Now they all know because I'm telling everyone. Uh, yeah. But before then, it was a secret. You didn't yeah. find out until you got there it was going to be like this? Exactly. No, didn't know anything. So this was a nice surprise. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> it, was, it was a nice surprise. Doing 25 takes that aren't going to mean anything. All right. Plus five. Plus five. Oh, my mm -hmm. goodness. Mm -hmm. So look at this. You, you work on this film. You're mm -hmm. doing your 25 plus five, maybe plus 10. Yeah. But now nominated for an Academy Award for, uh, yes. for Best Foreign Picture. Mm. I uh, think that's why. That's why. Because he, I mean, he, he's working so dedicated in every single detail in the scene. And you, you were talking about the script. I mean, the script is, of course, uh, the, from our basic information for what we're doing. But uh, he leaves it. If, if it's better without, we... we, we we keep what what's what's what has grown on during these uh, twenty five takes. So um, yeah, and and he is he's very demanding, uh, but also on himself. So he he dem he's uh, he's a fantastic uh, director, really, and Absolutely. he's so worth it. That, that this is the fact now with the nomination. It's it's so he's really worth every single second of it. True, I'd imagine if somebody's going to be as hard as the, uh, on themselves as they are on the crew, then I feel like that, that fosters that sense of trust and, and community within a, within a cast. Like, oh, yeah. if you're going to be that difficult on yourself, then I will follow you mm. because I, I know that you're not making me do this just for, you know, for, for giggles on your part. No. There's a reason behind your, a method to your madness, so to speak. Yeah. Mm. Definitely, and, and that's exactly the way he works. And, <laughs> and, and he's, that, that's why he's so worth this success. And, and the can the pandeur in Cannes last year that was uh, such a that was actually it was his mental I mean his dream and his goal he said I, I want to premiere the square in Cannes and I mean if I get the golden palm I'm very happy yes and so he did and, <laughs> yeah. and so and uh, yeah and we can expect if he does get the, or we all get the golden man you know the one yeah. The Oscar, yeah, yes. the Oscar uh, on Sunday. I, you are, you can expect something happening on stage. Ooh. I won't tell you. All what, right, well, you I like know, it. But there will uh... happen something. Oh, mm -hmm. I feel like why not? If you're if you're nominated, you may as well prepare in the event that you win. Why not? Instead of going yeah. up there and going, I can't believe this. Yeah, you're right. Ah, yeah, you're it's right. your moment. Yeah. How many times are you going to get a chance to be up on that stage accepting an award for something you worked so hard yeah. for? Yeah, you're right. Mm. No. So, uh, speaking of uh, the award show, mm -hmm. of course, it's everybody's going to be asking you, oh, who are you wearing? Was it <laughs> was it was it a big uh, decision for you to decide like, oh, who? What do I wear going um, on this carpet? Uh, no, actually not, because I have a good friend back in Sweden. He's uh, uh, an artist, uh, Christer Lindarv. Uh, he is a, f a fantastic showman, one of the greatest in Sweden, Christer Lindarv. He's also a designer. He has made all the f beautiful dresses in his show back for many years. And when I, when I knew that I was going to Cannes, I asked, asked him for a dress. And so I borrowed one. 
But this time he said, please let me do one for the special occasion. So we have, uh, yeah, uh, this one is going to be really, really oh, amazing. <laughs> yeah. Oh. So what is uh, it for the excitement of going to Cannes, mm -hmm. and especially the woman in the Pomp Dior, but mm. the experience of that, do you imagine that the Oscars is going to be a, 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 much more of a bigger experience than that? Oh, yes. In, yes, definitely. It's so much more. Uh, there, there's, it, it's, I guess, a bigger, bigger audience in in the world watching Oscars. Of course, yes. I think this is uh, something really, really big. Well, and I've always heard that it's the. Are you gonna sneak a little food in with your purse? Because I always hear it's like the longest time before you get a chance to eat. Mm -hmm. So yeah, um, that that's a very nice question. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> you're like my mother. Yes. Uh, yeah, Bring something to eat. I'm really. I'm worried about you. <laughs> Please. Yeah, I know you're a good host. <laughs> That's why. Yes, in my little bag, wearing uh, on on Sunday, I will have these kind of tiny bars, energy bars, you know, uh, to just <laughs> if I'm about to faint. So don't worry about me. All if right, I, I'll survive. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Annika, it has been a, a pleasure talking to you. Likewise. Oh, you honestly. Don't, that's so kind of you. No, that's I'm honest. Now, uh, if they want to keep up to date with you in all social media, mm -hmm. whether uh, whether the next the latest film project you're working on, uh, anything you might be doing in terms of your hobbies, yeah. where's the best place that people can follow you to see what you're up to? It's Instagram. Instagram. And uh, yeah, uh, can you spell my name? That's a big <laughs> question. Can we have a sign somewhere? It here? will be coming underneath you. Oh, yes. Oh, great. Please follow me. I promise I'll be better to, to actually show more of myself and my career on Instagram, but please follow me. It would be uh, such an honor. Thank Because uh, I, I, I was looking at Instagram, and I don't know if I found you exactly, but I saw like a lot of pictures like furniture and things like that, but that's I don't think that's me. you. No, 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 no. no. Different Annika. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> no, don't go no, there. No, no furniture. <laughs> I'm no not showing any furniture on my Instagram feed. No. Forget it. Yeah. <laughs> There is me, me and m me and some dogs. Yes, I love dogs. Yeah. Oh, all, all right. right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so, I uh, do you already know what kind of uh, post show party you're going to be doing for the Academy Awards? I don't know yet. No, I'm just going to see where the night takes you. But as many as possible. Oh, wow, look at that! So, mm -hmm. and then of course, see you know, all the different various magazines the next day, all over the internet. There, and all your in your very cool gown, your oh, your your, your yeah. personally made gown. Look at yeah, that! Yeah, very yeah. nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Annika, best of luck next Sunday. Thank you so much. Yes. It, it's been a pleasure. Be honest. Oh. Is it true where they say it's just a thrill to be nominated? Or no, you just like, no. I better win. We better win or that's it. It's okay for a win. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Yes. Uh -oh. yeah. Be careful, everybody. She's going to come out swinging <laughs> if they do not win for Best Born Film. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Ben Frank Moran. I've been your host today. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Happy Go Jackie. My guest today, Annika Lilsblad. Oh, fingers crossed. Yeah. <laughs> uh, make sure you check out The Square. And, of course, tune into the uh, Academy Awards next Sunday night to see yes. if her film wins the Best Foreign Picture Award there. So, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, we'll see you back here for another episode of I Talk Movies. Take care, everybody. From producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire Popcorn Talk Network, we would like to thank you for tuning in. For questions or comments, be sure to visit popcorntalk.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of the Popcorn Talk Network. Views expressed here are those of the host owner. Not necessarily, but the views of the Popcorn Talk Network are its owners and principles.